Welcome to Automation Chat. I'm your host, Teresa Hauk, Executive Editor of the Journal for Merkel Automation and our Partner Network Magazine. Today I'm joined by Steve Wetzel, Principal Engineer, and Brad Pollard, Vice President of Sales for Automation Products with Rockwell Automation and Compass Product Partner, Southwire. We're gonna talk about how VFD cable can improve performance in your process. But first, it's time for our family-friendly, silly joke of the day. Why did the golfer wear two pairs of pants? In case he got a hole in one. <laughs> good one there, Teresa. Yeah, thanks. Steve, I hear you have a good joke. Let's hear it. Well, it's COVID-related, actually. Do you know why ants do not get COVID-19? Why? Because they have little antibodies. <laughs> That might be worse than the one I just told, <laughs> but I love it. <laughs> well, thanks Brad and Steve for joining me today. I'm already having fun and I appreciate you talking with me today about VFD cables. So this is a good topic because a lot of people don't realize the significance of how the VFD cable and how it's used can impact the efficiency of their operation. So let me start out by asking drives have issues that traditional power systems don't. Why is that? Well, let me let me go first on answering that, Teresa. And, and the main reason, and, and first off, yeah, traditional power, 60 hertz, three-phase power, we've been using for, for generations in this country, and we pretty much got it figured out. And it, in general, it works pretty trouble-free. But that's because it just uses a simple single frequency, 60 hertz. Now, drives, they say variable frequency, but they have hundreds of thousands of frequencies involved in the pulse width modulated waveform a drive puts out. And IEEE papers tell us that those frequencies can be up to and over 30 megahertz. So it's roughly a million times higher in frequency, some of those components. And all this high frequency information makes electricity work differently. Um, Currents like to flow on large surface areas and not through the body of a single conductor, but they'll flow on building infrastructure like large st uh, steel. And it just really totally changes the game. So you need a special cable between your inverter and your motor um, to be able to handle these, these uh, effects. And so what kind of Specific problems are we talking about? Uh, I know that, that you had mentioned previously when we talked something about motor bearings. What else, what are we talking about here? Yeah, uh, premature motor failure, uh, primarily through bearing fluting, which, which damages the, the bearings. EMI, electromagnetic interference, is, is, is a big factor in this, which can affect radios, communication, control systems, uh, drive trips. Uh, the wrong cable can lead to excessive drive trips. Uh, as well as motor failure. So there's there's a variety of issues. Um, one of Rockwell's engineers actually told me a story a while ago where they had a customer that put in a new drive system just using standard uh, unshielded cable and uh, it was on the factory floor and it went to start up the drive and the uh, fire alarm went off. So they shut down all the equipment, they exited the building, they called in the fire department, looked around, there was no fire. So bring everybody back into the building and start up. Well, that's that's a huge production loss right there, but it gets worse because then they start up all the factory, the factory's humming along, they start up that new drive line and the uh, fire alarm goes off, right? So they end up doing this a few times. It was an EMI, an inter inter electromagnetic interference problem that, that that was causing this issue. Yeah, that's and, a big deal. And, and very similar to that point, I, I have, you know, from a sales perspective, I'm out in the field a lot or, typically quite a bit and I'm speaking to customers and one customer we had he had a kind of a, a very similar story to what Steve just mentioned but he basically or this customer basically had a couple of different lines they had installed different cables on and so one of them they just noticed that was having more issues with more drive trips essentially and they didn't know why so you know troubleshooting it as you guys uh, probably watching this know very well is very difficult locating the exact problem or that specific drive trip was very diff difficult. Uh, but they did realize that the common denominator or uncommon denominator was they actually had two different cables. So they went back just trying it, right? No, there's no, they didn't know for sure. They went back and, and did use one of our cable uh, installations 
and then they all of a sudden uh, had, had better performance, uh, so, uh, better system performance from that point forward. So again, they, they made some other tweaks through the system. So I, I can't 1,000% say it was the cable, but we believe it was based on, uh, on the changes that they've made and the performance of the other very similar line. So does it seem like um, cable should be one of the first things they look at when they're setting up their motor systems? I think it I think it should be because the cable addresses the issue in a couple ways. First off, a shielded cable, if properly installed, will significantly reduce EMI. People buy shielded control cables for just that reason, but a drive cable you need to you need to terminate differently because drives create a lot of common mode current, which is excessive current that gets pushed down the drive or pushed down the cable from the drive to the motor. Now, once the current's down at the motor, it can't just sit there, it's got to get back to the drive. So it's high frequency, so it likes to go on surface areas like I talked about, that's caused of the skin effect. And so it, it wants to travel, it's been shown to travel actually in IEEE papers through building infrastructure like building steel. And it's an uncontrolled path, you don't know where that current's gonna go. If instead we use a properly terminated VFD cable, which means terminating that cable with a low impedance termination, um, low impedance at high frequency at both ends, now we've got a path for that current to flow back to the inverter. So we're, we're minimizing all the currents flowing elsewhere. That's going to reduce problems, as well as we're properly shielding it. You need to terminate that cable shield to realize the effects of the EMI mitigation as well. So we're not broadcasting noise throughout the facility, which can interfere with other processes. Termination is one of the most important aspects of using that cable though. If you don't terminate it properly, you're not going to get the desired results. And we've seen some scary things in the field regarding that, haven't we, Brad? We have, we have. Uh, and I'll, I'll just want to make a couple of points. One, what I always tell customers about this, uh, uh, you know, when we're talking, because uh, we talked about BFD cables in, in, in my space. I mean, it's, it's probably 60% of what I speak to. And so what I always mention to the customer is, hey, you know, because when it comes down to it, it there is a nominal cost uh, a adder to your typical cable, a plastic cable, single conductor is what we typically see. I would say for the vast majority of people installing VFDs, cable sometimes is an afterthought. And my point to the customers is, and usually it's talking from an electrical engineering side with the support of Steve as well, is, you know, hey, if this can improve your process, if this can take one drive trip out of your process, every so often, what's that mean to you? And I'll specifically Southwire, obviously it called, we're, we're in it to manufacture cable, right? If that drive trips, that line goes down, it costs us quite a bit of money. So, uh, you know, usually the BFD cables are shorter runs, right? 250 foot lengths is, is typically the max that I've seen. So it is a nominal uh, of, uh, a difference in cost for sure. But if it can save you one drive trip, uh, you know, let's say every year or every six months, what does that save you in time and down and downtime and extra efficiency from running your products on your line? So, uh, you know, we, we really talk about here are some things that can happen. You know, Steve has uh, quite often has talked to me a lot. You, you can't walk into say every single line and say, you have to have BFD cable in this one environment, right? They're all different. So, you know, one of our big points is that these things can happen. Uh, you know, it's not just theory uh, behind, there is, there is actual science behind it. So these things can happen. So mitigate some of that risk. You're already paying for the most, the best process uh, in your line anyway, just for the most uptime. So mitigate some of that risk and cable certainly can be a, a, a benefit to it. Well, the second part of that I'll address is one of the things that when they do select BFD cable, we find it's, that it's quite often uh, uh, not understood out in the, in the field is what to do with that shield. And I'll give a couple of quick examples on that. I was actually at a, a, a greenfield facility being installed with uh, eight or nine electrical contractors uh, with one of our other electri electrical engineers. And, and we were helping them uh, ground that shield. This particular electrical contractor had never installed shielded cable. The engineering firm had selected the VFD cable. And so they actually asked us to come on site. We did, we performed some on-site uh, consultancy with those guys and we showed them how to actually properly ground that cable. And, you know, and then, so that's one, one thing and we find it in the field that, like I said, that particular customer had never worked with shielded cable. It always been unshielded cable. But number two, uh, a couple, another thing that I found quite interesting 
is actually one of the Rockwell partners had asked me to come up and, and visit them because they had a customer at then that bought VFD cable, bought shielded VFD cable, and they were cutting the shield off. In this case, it was copper tape shield. There's a couple of different types of shields, but in this case, it was copper tape shields. By, by buying the VFD cable, they were trying to do the best thing for this, uh, it, this particular installation, and they happened to be in the automotive market, uh, but then they were cutting off the shield, mitigating one of the huge uh, uh, advantages from installing a VFD cable. So I basically went in and as, as Southwire representative and showed them how to use a termination kit. And there's a couple of different ways to ground your shield, but we were really talking about why you need to do it, what's one way to do it, and, and what's the best way to do it. Don't cut off that shield because, you're, again, you're, you're losing a big advantage that you're paying for by buying a VFD cable. And it's my understanding you have several different kinds of cables. Do you want to describe what those are? Yeah, we have uh, and, and, and we have uh, different termination kits for the different types of cables too. Brad, do you want to go over our product offering? You know what? I, I do have a couple of here. Uh, I'll <laughs> actually apologize for leaning down. Oh, it's better than I have. I, I did want to show you a couple of samples. So we do have a couple of different options. Um, Southwire has a flexible VFD cable. So this, this particular construction, and it carries a lot of the ratings that you may need in a factory, old list of properties and other things, won't go into the details, but this is a very flexible VFD cable, has three power conductors plus a single ground. And it, this particular construction is built for flexibility, so it's fine stranded and it has a, a braided shield. So like I said, you're working on a, a tight space, or a, a, a real hard bend, this may be the cable for you. Now another cable, and I'll actually show a very similar construction, but just a lot larger, because we make some big cable, is this particular <laughs> one right here. You can see this is a big cable. I can I could work out with it, right? So this particular construction, 777, um, so a very large cable construction. This particular one has three power conductors and three bare grounds. In this particular case, we make it with a copper tape shield. Great shield for to control your EMI, right? But it's not as flexible as the braid I just showed. But we have the capabilities to make a lot of other different types as well. Um, I won't show you each one of those, um, but we have, you know, from the flexible cables to the copper tape shield, normal construction you may see out in the field to armored products as well. And then just to address one of our termination kits, we actually, and, and again, I mentioned, and I always like to mention, there's there's a lot of different ways to skin the cat, right? But, but the main thing is you properly ground your shield. So this is one of our termination kits. It comes in, in a single package, size to your cable. And this is actually one that I show every now and again. That's just a sample to kind of, that I usually go over, or we go over and show you how to actually properly terminate it. So we have a lot of different constructions. I think we'll probably have 13 or 14 different constructions and a couple of different uh, terminations options for, for you at Southwire. Yeah, and, and regarding that, um, we also have videos online to show how to terminate these cables. If you just Google Southwire, YouTube, VFD, you'll see what they are because as Brad mentioned, one of the biggest things that we find is the installers are not familiar with how to install this kind of cable. And you guys say the right thing, Rockwell tells customers you want a 360 degree termination. So all the way around that cable at both ends, but not everybody reads the installation manuals. <laughs> Go figure, right? Well, you know, we can put a link to your YouTube channel right in our episode description to make sure. it easy for everybody. Yeah. And one last question here before we have to wrap up. What about installing a reactor or a filter instead of a VFD cable? Tell me about that. Well, that's a, we get that question a lot because there's a lot of issues with VFDs and people need to address them. And sometimes one product is a solution. Sometimes multiple products are needed to solve those problems. So let's say that you do have a really long cable run. You're running four or 500 feet and you're hooking up to an old motor. Well, one of the main problems you have then is a voltage reflection which on older motors, that can short the windings out in the motor because you may see close to 2000 volts of peaks on that and the windings aren't designed for it. That's why they come up with inverter duty motors to have increased insulation to not have that happen. But if you want to do this, you can install VFD cable, but in that case, VFD cable will do nothing to reduce the magnitude of that waveform. 
So there, what you need is a sine wave filter that will literally reduce the magnitude of that waveform to protect your motor. VFD cables do nothing to uh, reduce reflected waves. They simply can handle those reflected wave voltages that sometimes we see a standard cable like THHN fail. Um, another case is EMI, or uh, not EMI, and, and, and VFDs do a great, or VFD cable does a great job in reducing EMI, but harmonics, harmonics is a big issue in drives, and VFD cable does nothing to address those. So what VFD cable does best is it controls your common mode current and it reduces EMI. Those are two pretty big areas, but if you need additional protection, like to protect an older motor on a longer cable run, you're gonna to wanna to put in a sine wave filter. They're not cheap, but, but it's cheaper than burning out your motor, right? So you need to look at the whole situation. Um, we recommend putting in VFD cable if you've got any concerns at all, because you're gonna to have to put a cable in anyway. Um, these other devices are gonna be extra purchases. They're gonna take extra room, um, extra time to maintain. And, and, and keep running. So start with VFD cable. And then if you need other protection, look at that based on the recommendations of, your, of, uh, of Rockwell. All right, thank you both. We're out of time, but I really appreciate this conversation. And to our listeners and viewers, we'll, I'll include information in the description so you can get more information about this important topic. And it's been great talking to you. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks, Teresa. Thanks, Teresa.